Today we're in Invercargill, New Zealand. We're so excited to show you a bunch of Southland's local specialties. We're hunting down the best New Zealand food. Food that celebrates our country's prime produce, seafood and meat. This is our third video from New Zealand and we're at the bottom of the South Island. Watch out for one of New Zealand's most prized delicacies and a whole lot of Kiwi classics. In this four part series, we're traveling all over New Zealand to show you the best food from our homeland. From food gathered right from the source, to dishes that represent New Zealand's diverse ethnic communities, plus a ton of Aotearoa's awe-inspiring landscapes. You don't want to miss this series. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. We are super excited about this Southland video. We are going to be showing you all of the local delicacies and favourites and things that you should be eating when you're in this region. Now we're starting this food tour in the small town of Bluff and Bluff is 20 minutes outside of Invercargill and it is famous for its oysters. Now Bluff oysters grow in the Fovo Strait. The cool and deep waters make them taste absolutely phenomenal and they're really slow growing and there is a really strict quota system uh, per season which makes them really really prized we can't all wait to get into these let's go and grab some Check them out, two dozen fluffies. I am beyond excited. Let's go and get into them. I have never had two dozen bluff oysters sitting in front of me. The reason for that is because they truly are a delicacy. So they are only in season from March to August. And as I was saying, they're really slow growing. So these guys are about nine years old when they are caught. And there is a really strict quota system. So this year, they're allowed 14.95 million oysters across the season, but the industry have decided that they're going to limit that to 7.5 million. So there's always a huge demand that totally outweighs the supply, which means that they're also super expensive. So two dozen of these bluff oysters was 64 New Zealand dollars, which is a lot of money. So this is a real treat. I'm gonna go in and just eat one. And I think I'm gonna go for this really juicy fellow right here. So they'd run out of lemon, but that's okay. I'm happy to have it just natural, nothing on it. So, all right. Oh God, this is gonna be so good. All right. Mm. Oh man. Oh. It is so good. They're very briny, very creamy, and they have a really strong mineral flavor. That mineral flavor coats your mouth, and it really lingers, and it really doesn't need anything else. It doesn't need lemon, it doesn't need pepper, it doesn't need vinegar. It's just the most stunning, intense, beautiful flavor on its own. Look at these oysters, it's unbelievable. Like Sheena said, to have this many in front of us. So these are a dredged oyster, not a rock oyster. So they sit on the seabed and the boats go out and they dredge them up off the sea floor. Fresh as, and the smell is unbelievable. Oh, just a really salty smell. They smell like if you're on a very wide open, windblown beach and you've got the, the kelp sort of drying in the sun and that sea air coming in, that's the smell you get from these. Let's just grab one. Mm. Oh my God. These are unreal. Oh. Something I love about bluff oysters is the texture. They've got a lot of bite. so. You can really bite into them. They're almost like, probably the best thing I can think to describe the texture is like a piece of stewed apple. So it's got real bite on the teeth. It's not crunchy, it's soft. So it's really well stewed apple, so soft. But often oysters just sort of dissolve in your mouth and slip down your throat. These don't, you can really eat them, you can chew them. 
Oh, and the flavor just keeps on giving. It's still going. So that, that minerally flavor that Sheena talked about and the um, it's saltiness, that sea flavor, but it's not overpowering. It just keeps going and going. You could easily eat one of these and just sit on it for 10, 15 minutes because you're still going to be getting the flavor. And it's unbelievably good. So Fowler's Oysters also do deep fried oysters and we thought while we're here we may as well get into those as well so we ordered some battered oysters and chips and it almost seems sacrilegious to me to deep fry a bluff oyster but the gang at Fowler's Oysters say that it's the best way to eat them so let's see let's try one of these deep fried ones this one's got a little handle so we'll go with that Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Oh, that, that is good. The batter's um, very thin and super, super crispy. But the oyster tastes, um, it tastes like a normal oyster to me, not like a bluff oyster. So that really unique, beautiful flavor you get from the bluff oysters, I feel has been taken away a bit. So it just, it's, um, it's really good, like really tasty, but give me the fresh ones any day so you get that full punch of bluff oyster flavor. Oh, another just about as a six. Those oysters are so good. We've grabbed some, some takeaways so we can have these <laughs> later on tonight. There's another two dozen in here. Incredible. We've left Bluff. It's now the next day and we're in Invercargill, which is really close to Bluff. This is the southernmost city in New Zealand meant to have some really good food and it's it's a relatively big city it's got 55,000 people so there's quite a bit here to, to check out so we're gonna go sample some food for breakfast we're coming to an Invercargill institution the zookeepers cafe and we are here to eat one of Southland's most famous foods and that is the Southland cheese roll oh. I'm so ready to get into this breakfast. Let me show you what we've ordered. So this is the famous Southland cheese roll. Look at all of that gooey cheese oozing out of that bread. And there was one other thing on the menu that we absolutely had to order when we saw it, and that was mutton bird, or TT. So that's the mutton bird there, and it's served on bubble and squeak, and we've got some poached eggs and hollandaise on the top. Let's start with this cheese roll. Now you can really only find cheese rolls in this part of the world. You can't get them in the North Island of New Zealand. So when you're down in these parts, this is the thing to eat. Now what it is, is a gooey cheese mixture that's wrapped up in a piece of bread, grilled and then um, topped with a pat of butter and then there's a little bit of parsley on the top as well. So let's just give this a taste. Mmm. Oh. That is so, so good. The cheese mixture is often a little bit of a secret. It usually has evaporated milk, a packet of onion soup mix, uh, grated cheese, and then sometimes people, people add uh, Dijon mustard, sometimes a little bit of uh, grated onion. And the overwhelming flavor is that onion soup mixture. Beautiful onion flavor, it's really gooey, cheesy, creamy. And then that bread is really crunchy. And just, it's just a really, really good snack. The guys at Zookeepers Cafe said that their cheese rolls are also really good dunked into sweet chili sauce, so let's give it a go. Super tasty. The sweet chili is nice, but I feel like it overwhelms the cheese roll flavor a little bit. It's just such a classic kiwi snack that I don't think it needs anything else to go with it. This one's really good because it's got little chunks of sweet onion in there as well. Oh, this is a winner. This eggs shabo is such an interesting dish to me and I've always wanted to try this mutton bird. So you can see see the bird there and it's called mutton bird because the early settlers, the early European settlers to Norfolk Island thought this tasted like mutton. And the look of it is like, that, I mean that looks like lamb. That's amazing the way it pulls apart like that. Let's rip in. I'll tell you all about 
what's in here, but I'm just gonna get into this bubble and squeak underneath and a big stack of mutton bird first. Oh my god. Mmm. Oh. The mutton bird. Incredible. I can see why they called it mutton bird. It's got a fattiness like lamb. But mutton bird is a seabird. It eats a ton of fish. I mean, that's all it eats. And that tastes like fish. It tastes like um, small, oily fish. So it tastes like sort of sardines, anchovies, that sort of thing. It's got a saltiness, it's got a real oiliness. Let's just have some bites up. Huh? Oh. The flavor's amazing, it's really sweet. But then that that's that fish fish flavor, the salt and the sea, it's it's incredible. So there's some pretty interesting things about this dish. One, it's called eggs shadbolt. So that's a take on eggs, Benedict. Um, shadbolt is a person. Tim Shadbolt, he's the mayor down here in Invercargill and has been for as long as I can remember. He's well loved. And so this dish is obviously named after him. G'day everyone, I'm Tim Shadbolt, the mayor of Invercargill and you're watching Chasing a Plate. So it's got hollandaise, poached eggs, um, the mutton bird and the mutton bird is sitting on bubble and squeak and bubble and squeak is basically all the leftovers from a roast so this one looks like it's got I see some peas some beans some corn some onions some um, kumra or sweet potato um, potato and it's all just fried together in fact this one looks like it's been deep fried so it's just all your leftovers put together to make a little a little base ingredient and it works really well with this and the mutton bird is a super interesting bird as well and the way it's harvested so it's actually harvested from its burrows so it, it all the islands south of here so down the very bottom of new zealand there's an island called Stewart island which has a number of islands all around it and the the maori the indigenous people of new zealand they harvest the mutton bird so every year they harvest about um, a quarter of a million so 250,000 of these birds and they grab them from the burrow when they're young. So before they, they leave the burrow, after they're born, they, they grab them from there. And so they're, they're quite a small bird, but they're a seabird. So they, and they actually migrate all the way, you know, all around the world. They go to America, but they, where they breed and their home base is right here at the very bottom of New Zealand. It's a super unique thing to be eating because, I mean, coming from Auckland, which is at the top of New Zealand, I've never ever seen mutton bird for sale in a shop, in a restaurant, anywhere. It's really beautiful, the creaminess of the egg, the bubble and squeak's a little bit crunchy and creamy, but it's all about the mutton bird. I'd happily just pretty much have a pile of mutton bird here because the flavour is super, super intense. It's really good. What an awesome way to start the day. Super unique food at a super unique restaurant. So the, the titi or the mutton bird, mm. we loved it. Phenomenal. Absolutely loved it. So good to try. And that cheese roll, otherwise known as Southern Sushi, that's what they call it here as well down south. It's a great name. <laughs> oh man, it was so good. I almost want to take like a huge pack of them take away and take them back up north. Oh, so cheesy. So, so good. But there's more food just up the road. So let's go get the next thing. Next up we're hunting down what locals say is a really good pie. Now, when you talk about pies in New Zealand, we mean savoury pies, never sweet pies. And judging by the line that's out the door of fat bastard pies, I think we're in for a bit of a treat. There were some really good looking pies in that cabinet, but we went for a lamb mint and kumara pie and this thing is really hefty it weighs quite a bit and it's a really good looking pie so you've got um, this flaky buttery pastry on the top and then inside I think it's going to be packed with filling so let's just give this thing a taste all right oh. So hot! Mmm! Whoa! Look at that dark filling! So that mouthful was mainly pastry, which was really light and buttery. And I just got a tiny bit of that filling. 
but already it's got a really beautiful savory flavor and that mint and that lamb the lamb is so tender the mint is quite subtle but works really well I've bitten into the pie to show you just how packed with filling it is so you've got these tender tender chunks of braised lamb that orange thing there is the kumara so that's sweet potato and then it's bound in this beautiful thick dark gravy all right let's go again hmm Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Man. That lamb is melt in your mouth. It is so tender. It just falls apart. It's got a beautiful flavor. The mint is stronger, sort of deeper within the pie. It just is the perfect partner to that lamb. And then the kumara is really earthy and sweet. Oh, this is a good pie. I'm wolfing into this pie now. I've already had some. It is truly incredible. Mm. That dark gravy, unreal. I reckon we need to go back and buy some more. Mm. Try their mince and cheese. Next up, we're hunting down what locals say. 